This video is brought to you by the Farmer Klein YouTube channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Hey everybody, and welcome back to another Map First Impressions video. Today we're going to take a look at Agronopolis. This map can be found over at the FarmingSimulator.com website or the in-game mod hub. And as of the 1.0 release, this map is available for all platforms. Now, before we get into the map, this video is brought to you by Zach Schultz. Thank you for being a farm baron. Now I have to say, when I was doing my initial reconnaissance of this map, there are just a few words that came to mind. Oh my gosh, this map is absolutely beautiful. It has to be, in my opinion, one of the best South American maps we've seen to date. And you know, we have seen a fair bit of Brazilian maps as of late, probably over the last six or seven months, we've seen quite a few of them. I have to say, I think this one is number one. So let's read a bit of the description. Welcome to Agronopolis, a simple and calm city. Its economy is based on agriculture, explore the region, and several beautiful landscapes are present. If you want to have some fun, then go to the soccer field next to the wool sale. If you're hungry, you can go buy a hot dog at the trailer at Laurel's Laurel's trailer. Agronopolis was planned with great care and always thinking about the player. The map does include multi-terrain angle for PC players and dynamic mud for PC players. The map contains four grain cell points, has a train with three storage points for the train. You can sell grain at the port or sell wood at the Madrilaria Agropolis. Yeah, uh, yeah, okay. So you can sell wood or grain using the train at the port. Sell a bales, wool, and cotton. Sell a milk and eggs. Map has a sugarcane plant. Map has a biogas plant. And of course, there is the obligatory South American limestone mine with a twist. I really like this implementation. Uh, there are, this map is multi, multi fruit. So we have black beans, rice, millet, and sorghum included in the map. For rice, there are specific rice fields that you can flood. We'll try to locate a few of those on the map. The map is also fully seasons prepared with a seasons mask. And the map is precision farming ready with a custom soil map. So with that, let's go ahead and jump on in. We'll go ahead and select the mods we typically use when we take a look at these maps. And there we go. Go ahead and pull up the log. Now, while we're waiting for the map to load up, I will say that if you load this map up in Farm Manager or start from scratch, you're going to find that there are no buildings or equipment at the main farm. And you also do not own any land. Also, just as an aside, the map authors that are credited with this map have put out a fair number of other mods. So you may want to go ahead and check those out also over the Giants Mod Hub. And they are also the creators of the South Brazilian map if you happen to have liked that one. So let's go ahead and take a look at the PDA. Take a look at the lands area. We see you start out by owning field one and all of the main farm, which includes sheep, chicken, pigs, and cows. The unbuyable land, which is basically all of the cell points. Aside from the dairy, interestingly enough, is $2.7 million. We can Buy the mine, 45 acres of a lime mine for a million dollars. We do have the biogas plant, which is buyable for $125,000. For whatever reason, we can buy the dairy for $267,000. And then we have several forest areas and, of course, plenty of fields scattered around the map. If we just take a look at a few of these field prices, we have areas like Field 57, just under an acre in size, $20,000. Field 8, 16.65 acres, $400,000. Uh, 
Field 21, seven acres, $170,000. So quite an array of field prices. You'll see we have all of our standard crops available to here on Farm Sim 19, as well as millet, sorghum, rice, and black bean, as I mentioned in the introduction. We go in and take a look at our custom soil map. You'll see that we have a fair bit of loamy sand and sandy loam scattered around the map, spotty loam and silty clay in some areas. Predominantly, we are loamy sand and sandy loam. Take a look at our prices screen. We have five sell points for the bulk of our grain crops. We do have a sell point for cotton and wool, two sell points for eggs, two sell points for milk. We do have the wood chip sell point for our wood chips. And then if we do not own the biogas plant, we can indeed sell the silage, hay straw and grass at the bale sell point. We do have the ability to sell manure at the BGA solid manure sell point, which is different than the biogas plant. That's important to recognize. And we have our sell points for our additional crops. And then we also have the ability to sell our pellets if you have straw harvest add-on enabled at the bale sell point. Start out with a decent little list of starting equipment. All of it is owned, none of it is leased. No animals at the start. And we do have contracts available to us on the map. Now, if we take a look at our starting fleet, we start out with the New Holland T5 120 and a John Deere 61 35M. So our tractor's range in horsepower from 117 to 142. We have the Massey Ferguson Activa 7347S Harvester. That is paired up with the Free Flow 25-foot Rain Header. We have the TKD 302 Trailer and the 1978 Pickup Truck. We have the three-point front Pottinger MEX-5. This is, a, this is a forager to chaff corn. Don't often see this as start of our parting equipment, or oh my gosh, as part of our starting equipment. And we have the Amazon Cat Catros 6002 2 cultivator, the Stara Series Master 3570 seeder, the Hardy sprayer, and we have the Knight RA 142. That is a TMR mixer. And we have front loader arms, pallet fork, a modded large grain silo farm storage shelter, farmhouse, and that is it. Now you will notice that our animal areas were not here in the owned items, and I already mentioned, if you start this map up on a farm manager or start from scratch, none of the animal areas, as well as none of the other buildings at the main farm, are there. So clearly, the preferred play mode is gonna be new farmer, because the custom animal pins are not gonna be there, and you can't buy them. Let's go take a look and see what you can get as far as placeables go. And once again, we'll just confirm no custom animal placeables. They're miscellaneous, nothing custom with the map. Silos, we have our large grain silo under decoration, nothing new. We do have the farm storage shelter building, of which we have three of at the start. And then we have our custom farmhouse. Now, since we're starting right here in town, I figure we'll just go ahead and jump to the fly around. And I will take a look at the main farm when we get over to that general area of the map. And we get a little bit of altitude. And one of the first things one of the first things I see is look at that distance texture. That's outstanding. We've got forested mountains off in the distance, rolling hills. And it really, I mean, it really seems to blend in. And of course, we're way up in the sky at this point, right? No, no right player is going to be up this high during their normal gameplay. So things can look a little amiss at this level of altitude, but overall, the distance scenery on this is really, really outstanding. 
The other thing I noticed on this map is it's very, very colorful. Seems to be that that is a kind of a trend with uh, some of the South America maps. And while I've never been to South America, I kind of feel this is a representation of what I would expect to find in a semi-rural South American environment. Now, before we get going too far, let's go back here to our map. Go to the lands area because there are a few farms I want to point out. We have obviously the starting farm here. That includes our farmhouse, chickens, cows, pigs, and sheep. Then we have a few other farm areas. Specifically, there's one over here by field 50, which is $129,000. Uh, there's another one over here that includes field 65 or 66. It's $173,000. There's one down here that includes field 56. It's $153,000. And there may be a few others scattered around that we're going to see during our drive around and our flyover. But I did want to point out those particular areas. In fact, right there is one of those particular kind of little farms that you could buy, should you so wish. Now you'll see that we do have power lines running between some of the fields and through some of the fields. These power poles do not have collisions on them. So we'll be able to basically go right through them should we so wish. I know that some players are very particular about, about that. Other players are not so much. So if you're one of the players that don't like collisions on things in the middle of the fields, well then congratulations. If you're a player that insists on having collisions on things in the middle of the fields, well, honestly, you'll probably play that way anyway. So the fact that those collisions aren't there probably really won't matter that much. So you can see the train line running through there. We will hop a train ride here in a little bit. Lots of irregularly shaped fields. And in fact, we're coming up to one of the fields right now that we can flood. Let's go ahead and kind of drop down and take a look at that. So on areas that we can flood, we'll have pedestals that look like this. We get a left click to flood the field. So now we just need to wait. Here we have a field of sorghum and a field of rice ready to harvest. So that's what the ready to harvest rice texture looks like. And now we have a flooded field. You can see the muddy, muddy water down there, hopefully. Now well, let's empty the field and we'll see that muddy water go away. As it recedes. And there it goes. So let's just check something while we're here. Let's go to vehicles. Let's go to Heat technology, nothing. Potato technology, nothing. Um, headers. So we've got black beans, rice, and millet for our grain headers. Our corn is set up for sorghum. Potato technology, nothing there. And nothing there. So that's how you're going to need to harvest these additional crops. We do have from time to time, we'll see these trees kind of falling across the road. Pretty cool. I like that. Nice little details. Lots of elevation changes on this map. Some flat areas, some very mountainous areas, some very hilly areas. Coming up here to the animal dealer. And we're going to come through all of these particular areas later on during the drive around. Got a hydro power plant right up here, courtesy of Ravenport. Looping around the northern part of the map, we have one of our cell points. And then the map just kind of drops off. Coming over here to field 66, this is one of those little farm areas. 
that you can deal with. Here is we have the buyable dairy. I don't know what they do, but they've got a whole lot of nice green grass. They must they must spend a fortune on uh, on sprinklers. Let's move on through. So this is the area that we started at. And what is down here? Oh, neat. This is a little uh, little portable sawmill. Right, let's continue on. Let's not get distracted too quickly. Here you can see some of the Severe elevation changes. Coming over here to another one of our large cell points. Oh. Our biogas plant is further up this way. And again, you can see that distance texture. I suspect more from the ground level that would really, really blend in pretty good. So here we have our biogas plant. We'll make our way down across the western edge of the map toward the southern edge, or southern corner, which is where the Port is located. Got a fairly large industrial area over here to our left. Pretty major road interchange. Nice little river running down through here. One of our train silos is directly below. And here we have the port. You see the train line comes in through here and then loops around the port. We have a really big cell point right here at the port. And then we'll just maybe follow the train a cell point. Follow the train line through this little jungle like area. Nice little a nice little bridge. And there goes the train. And here we are coming up to our our farmyard. So what better time to take a look around the farmyard than right now? Then we will loop around to the shop. Get our Mahindra and do the rest as a drive around. So here we have our farmhouse. Nice Brazilian flag flying. We have our pickup truck. We have our farmhouse. And I really like the, the tinted windows on this. And if we come in through here, this covered area, we can go inside the farmhouse. And then we have our sleep trigger right there nice simple farmhouse and then what we'll do is we'll just kind of make our way around down the various levels so we have one of our farm sheds here we have our three point hitch forager sprayer or trailer and our john deere tractor now this particular structure is the only thing that is here at the farm in farm manager or start from scratch here we have our chickens so we have our food trough our chicken buy point 50 chickens in this particular coop And then inside of here, 
we have our egg spawn point. Over here we have our cow area. So we have our cow delivery point, 200 cattle. We have our milk trigger and we use the animal pen extension mod and that is what puts the Lily milk sales machine here. And we can get in here and reposition this should we so wish. It helps us locate where our milk trigger is located. We then have our food trough and our water trough and our straw trough. So we have our straw trough here as well as our water trough. We use the animal pen extension mod again and that is what puts these water pipes here which helps us locate where the water trough is located. And then the food trough is right here where the mixing wagon is. And you'll notice this big pipe extending down and then we have our slurry pit and then down the hill a little bit more we have our manure pit we're going to check both of those out here in a little bit we wind our way down the road All right we have our slurry and then we have our manure for our cows. Then down here a little bit ways further, we have a a water trigger. Here we have a water pump. We have our then our pig area. So our pig area is right here. We have our draw point, our manure, our slurry, our food, our water, and then our pig delivery point. 300 pigs in this particular area. Now, up here is where we had our... So we went that way. And if we had continued to go down the hill, we would have come to our big farm silo complex. And the shed serves two purposes. It is our dump and fill point for our farm silo. So we have our fill pipe there. We have our dump grate there. And then we also have a nice large area to store farm machinery. Lots of nice ambient sounds. Hopefully they're coming through on the video. Let's turn that up a little bit. I think I turned those down the other day. Now, if we continue going around the road this way, we're going to get to our sheep. And we have our wool. We have our water. We have our food. And then we have our sheep. 250 sheep in this particular area. And that is the main farm. Now across the way here we also have another farm silo. It is also a um, I think it's a train transfer area but we have a dump station here we have a fill pipe here we also then have a dump station and fill trigger here for the train it is marked with a kind of a yellow icon which is typically what is used for cell points as opposed to the white icon which is what's used for silos but uh but yeah it says storage silo and I don't think we're going to see a storage silo here on the cell point. So this is, as best I can tell, kind of a train transfer station slash storage silo. Now, if we go across the river here, we're going to get to our shop here in town which is pretty low key. Really, we've got some cargo containers and then a little building. 
And there we go. You see we have a very large spawn point for our vehicles to spawn in at here. I don't see anything that would indicate a, uh, a workshop trigger here. Maybe we'll find it over at the gas station or somewhere else. This is very close to where we fawn in at. And here we have our gas station. And almost on cue, we have our workshop. Our workshop is inside the building here. Like I said, this this whole map just just feels like it is, uh, you know, the the epitome of the South American Brazilian maps that we have seen to date. So here we have the hot dog cell point that was mentioned in the description. And let's just go ahead and make our way over here to the wool cell point. So we have our wool cell point right over here and I think what we'll do is we take this road here we have the football field soccer field whatever you want to call it field that also was listed in the description a little in cab driving and try to make our way up to the dairy Got some speed bumps coming through agropolis agropolis there we can really get a good road from the ground perspective of that distant scenery. Like I said, I felt that it was going to blend in really well once we got down here to the ground. You have some custom ground textures also, as well as custom crop textures on the map. I'm not sure if I, if I think that there's custom lighting on here. Maybe there is, maybe it says in the description, but Honestly, the description was pretty long and I didn't really read all of it. I didn't want to keep you all for like 10 minutes on the description. And here we are at Lacto Valley. An excellent name for a dairy cell point. Don't you all agree? So here, here we have our cell point. And I believe Lacto Valley is also going to accept our eggs. Maybe not. Yep, eggs and milk as well as the hot dog joint in town.
Uh, let's go ahead and hit these hit the biogas plant as well as the wood chip cell point which is up here in the north west of the map and then we'll double back whoa we'll catch up the cooperative urbanos we'll swing over to the animal dealer just swing on in here this is that additional farm i mentioned earlier look at that plowed texture there or maybe that's planted those are planted potatoes planted potatoes there's a train running through there nice kind of run down building but still looks good look structurally safe for for now I have to say coming here to the end of farm sim 19 nine weeks to go as the there's the dynamic mud for PC players only uh, nine more weeks to go as the count said on the channel this morning really players really have a big big selection of really really nice looking maps to uh to pick and choose from you know going into the uh or basically heading out riding fs19 toward the sunset lots of maps to uh kind of go out with some glory with oh there went that mud I wonder, I wonder if we get up here. This money. No, uh, it's like a rock show. Okay. So yeah, if you're a PC player, you gotta watch out for the mud. Now, sometimes some people uh, say that they have some performance problems with the mud. So I do have a video in a how-to playlist on how to disable the dynamic mud should you find that your PC really has performance issues with it. Oh, here we have another, another one of those little farms. Now, what I was thinking was a road actually ends up being the railroad. So let's just run along the railroad and hope the train doesn't come. To get over here to this wood chip area. Don't try this at home, kid. I am a trained professional. Oh, looks like there's a road that will take us down to the biogas plant, so it's all good. So here we have our log cell point that will also let us sell logs off the train. We have our wood chip cell point here for trailers. A really impressive wood cell point here. We got another one of those portable band saws for logging. I didn't really see a grain or a dump station for uh, for like dumping um, dumping wood chips out of a train. Watch out for the mud. Driving through that will reduce your traction. As you'll see. So we have, here we are at the biogas plant. We have two large silage bunkers. Bunker number one and number two. We have our digester and our digestate. 
pretty straightforward. Uh, this is probably the manure and slurry cell point. Yep, BGA solid manure. This is where you're going to sell your manure and slurry regardless if you own the biogas plant or not. So far, it seems like the mud has been applied judiciously. Judiciously. Applying mud is good. Sometimes mud gets a little overused. And then you run into just general driving problems. And here we have another one of those farm areas that we mentioned earlier. We won't we won't necessarily go up and check that one out. I like how the, the mud and some of the water textures are coming across the road like they've been washed out or you kind of drainage. There we get a nice general view of kind of the various topography and hills and valleys of the map. Coming back to our dairy area. So we basically made a nice little loop there. So we do have traffic on more than just the paved roads. Sometimes on maps like this, you only see traffic on paved roads. Make our way on over here to one of the big cell points for grain crops. Winding our way down on in here. Really cool. Really nice. We have our way station. Our way house. See down into those trailers. And then we have our grain dump. Right here. And we'll make our way across the hydro plant to the animal dealer on the other side of the river. There we have the map edge going off that way. Really well done. This level. Not too terrible bad of a job hiding the map edge at this point by putting the flat 2D trees in and then putting real trees in front of those to, uh, to bring out some depth and density of the foliage. It's 
So here we are at the animal dealer. Look at the nice golden animal statue. Oh my, you got some toe problems there, Mr. John Deere. Your, your feet are tilted in. So here we have the animal dealer. Trigger. Right there. Really nice decorative elements around here. We got some ambient sounds. I'm sure you just heard the horse. Is, is this plant I'm seeing a fair bit of it scattered around here oh we got some nanner trees some nanner trees that would be an interesting crop to have in FS 22 bananas ba ba banana that's something I wanted to see maybe maybe we'll get it in a DLC maybe that's maybe that's the first expansion Fruit trees, where we uh, and nut trees, right? Nuts and fruits, where you have the tree shaker, shakes the uh, the trunk of the tree, and the shaker puts this big tarp out, kind of around the tree to catch all of the uh, fruit before they fall to the ground. So they had a nice, safe, soft landing. So here we are, at one of those fields that we talked about being able to be flooded see a flood station over there on that one that's the one with the rice in it and this is where we flooded the sorghum field oh a little bit of a river crossing creek crossing Let's make our way over here to the limestone mine. This limestone mine has a trick up its sleeve. Really super excited to show that to you. Like I said, over here we have that flood area for the rice field. Left click. See the water flood up. It's slow, I guess. There it is. There it's coming up. Left click again to drain it. Really nice to see that touch. We have another area to flood the field. So there's obviously some flat fields and there's some very hilly fields. You wouldn't have the ability to flood a hilly field. But these fields down here are more set up to be flat and therefore flood worthy. Now we're getting more to the hillier areas of of the map. Oh, I bet you this is super muddy. Super mud. All right, now we start our descent into the mine. say this is one of the really really nice mine areas although I have I do have to say also I would really not want to have to make a whole bunch of trips down here into the mine to get lime because it is quite a journey as you are about to see the mine is over here to our right can't really see much of it Getting a little bit of an inkling and oh there it is there she is 
but we can't get down into it quite yet. We're still going up. Look, that mine down there. We have to climb a hill before we can go and descend into the bowels of limestone mining. So here we uh, have a quicker way out. That's the way we're going to go out. Come in here to a way station. Thank you for letting us through. Oh, a little bit of road washout. Watch out there. Keep getting little hints of uh, hints of the mine. Coming down here to uh, switch back. Let me know in the comments. Well, I know you probably already have. Oh, some deep mud. Let me know in the comments. What do you think of this map so far? And then append your comments after the rest of the video. So the mine has a few little tricks up its sleeve. The first trick is that you can just use the bulk fill trigger to fill limestone. The second trick is if you buy the mine, then you'll have free access to a huge heap of limestone. All you gotta do is use the uh, the wheel loader that's down here to load it up. So here we have the lime bulk buy point, right? Buy your lime. But if you owned the mill, you can come down here And then use the New Holland here to scoop up what appears to be a near limitless supply of limestone. Oh, uh, you'll see. We get we got a solid object, right? But let's say we're rich. Now, once we have some money. Should we happen to buy the mine for $1 million? Now, my friends, watch the magic happen. We have ourselves some lime. All of this is glorious lime that we can use if we happen to own the limestone mine. Pretty neat little trick. Now we have to uh, climb on up out of here. But before we do that, let's take a little look around because I mean, there's a lot of effort went into this mine, not just a digging a hole in the ground and slapping a lime cell point in it, a lime by point. This, my friends, is a beautiful piece of work. One should download this map just to explore the mine yourself. Visually, it's amazing. The foliage, the trees, the, the palm, the, the whatever the heck those are. 
palm bushes, the banana plants. That's that you've got to come up, go up to get down into this thing. You know, this has truly been carved out of a large hillside. We have areas where we have, you know, runoff, drainage. You're gonna have, that's some deep mud there. You might have some problems trying to get a full load of lime up through that. And then we have this beautiful field of sunflowers over here beside us. And now that we have paid for our lime, we can just exit here the side road and not Hope we don't fall in, Tookie. Don't fall in the line, mine. And we'll board the river and the mud again. Really nice. I really like this use of mud. It's not overly excessive. It's it is where it is because that's where it should be. These rock shelf textures. The ground texture. I mean, we're not using the fancy parallax occlusion or anything, but they look they look really nice, even how they are. So we're just going to run down this way. We've got a road. This will take us up to the main farm. We've already explored that. And then we're going to branch off and get to the bale cell point. southern part of the map is a bit hilly it's uh, quite the hilly terrain on the fields what do you all think about the use of the dynamic mud script on the map I've definitely seen it used worse ways there we have our farm over here to the right Part of field one, which is pre planted in millet, as we have a nice millet growing texture. You're going to find on some low points down here, we have flooded little spots of flooded field here in field one, and I believe also over here in field three. Field three, you're also going to have to clear some uh, fallen tree out of the way. Really, really like this. The way this has been done. You didn't realize that I'm probably going to be rating this this a uh, five. I think it deserves that. Just, just from the visual standpoint. Visually, it's a five-star map. down here now we're at the southern edge of the map again the map edge has been done really well we're far enough away from the actual map edge the foliage is dense enough to where we really don't even see that that 2d map texture that's over there oh man coming through here with a load of bales oh look at that there's the port the other side of the river but yeah you don't want to you don't want to tip the trailer coming through here with a load of bales. And here we are at the bale cell point. Again, another, another broken John Deere tractor. What is up with that? So here we have our bale trigger, our rod there. 
right there. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, meet y'all back out here at the main road. What we're gonna do is we're gonna run up here to the power plant, Copacana, and then we're going to run across here and down here to the port, and then up here to Coamo. Then we'll hop on the train and take a train ride, and that's where we're gonna end it. Too bad there isn't a bridge it goes across there other than the other than the train bridge but yeah man this is this will be quite a uh, interesting road to take with a oversized load of bales try to keep from rolling it Keep a constant eye out for those washed out roads. But at least the uh, the bale cell point is close, fairly close to the main starting farm location. Traction loss from the mud. Coming back to get me. And I like to see that we've got the non-American stop signs. Road gets wider here to make it easier to turn in. Kind of interesting. Oh, uh oh, didn't even see that drop gate. I was busy looking beyond into this cell point area. So here we have our sugarcane cell point. I like that we've got this this sugarcane growth, this volunteer growth right off the side. You kind of think about, you know, some sugar cane is spilled out there and, well, nature's doing what nature does and uh, regrowing it. Watch out for the drop gate. There we are. Now, like I said, we'll make our way down to the port. Traffic on the map is moving at the Giants normal leisurely, leisurely pace of around 20 miles an hour. This is a really interesting intersection. Custom road signs, or we got our speed bump sign. I've seen a few other custom signs the whole the whole time we've been on the video. Like that one up there, port. Oh, look at that. Pamunha, Pamunha, Pamunha. O carro da Pamunha está passando na sua rua. What is this? Pertinho da sua casa. Deliciosas Pamunhas. Pamunha, Pamunha, Pamunha. <laughs> that was cool. What on earth? 
I don't know what's going on. It's like, is that like a food truck? Is that like an ice cream truck? I don't know. So here we have our grain cell point down here at the port. Either one of these sides will work. And then we have the cell point for the train over there we saw on the fly around. Back up the road. To one last cell point. Oh, here we got that guy again. Pamunha, Pamunha. O carro da Pamunha está passando na sua rua, bem pertinho da sua casa. Deliciosas pamonhas, pamonha, pamonha, pamonha. Venha conferir aqui em nosso carro. Pamonha gostosa, pamonha cremosa. Venha aproveitar. Right, dude, we gotta go this pamonhas way. Quentinhas. He's selling his goods. I mean, I don't know, maybe, maybe a, an enhancement would be to put the, uh, the train crossings at the various train points, but hey, maybe, maybe down in South America and Brazil, they don't do that. So having those would be not realistic to the area. Quite possibly. Here we are at our scale once again, and then we'll loop on around. To the cell point. Watch out for these drop gates. This time around. And here we are at our dump grate. And that, my friends should do it so we're gonna close the video out by well, taking a train ride let's go ahead and pull up the map and uh, we'll get a little bit of altitude here and see where we are on the map coming down across the southern area of the map here the main farm will be over here to our to our right storage silo which we talked about i don't think we ever actually went and saw other than than going over there and looking at it during the fly around is right here to our right the farm is incorrectly i said over there to our left there we go i said we're going to close the video out here just doing the train ride around the map uh if the train ride doesn't interest you if the see more scenic aspects of the map doesn't interest you well that's fine you can uh, call it here and uh, let me know in the comments like i said what you think of agronopolis my thoughts are this is a dang impressive looking map i mean coming through here if it, it feels like you're coming through a little bit of a jungle there You've got kind of the, the crickets, the cicada sound going on. You got a whole lot of dense, various foliage. Same with coming here through the port. You just get this sense that the jungle, if you will, we'll call it that, is so the forest is, you know, trying to approach upon the port. And uh, the folks have basically cut away as much of the forest or jungle as they can to have a functional port, but it's still ever present. Same with this, we've got lots of various foliage going on. We have one of the train silo stations. 
But yeah. Really, really cool map. Clearly this started out probably as a Stancha Lapacha. Or a Stancha Lapacho, but man. It was hard. Hard picking out where that map ends and this map is. It is really, really nice. So I'm just going to stop it here. We're going to go ahead and roll the credits. And the video is just going to keep on going until we get back to where we were at the start of the train ride. Big shout out to all the farm hands, farm barons, and farm bosses. Thank you for joining the channel. Helps out greatly supporting the channel like that. If you're interested in maybe joining the channel, there's a join button down below the video. You can go ahead and click on that, see the different levels of membership and what all is involved. Did you know that over half of the views come from non-subscribers? I understand that some people are afraid of a commitment, but hey, go ahead, click that subscribe button, ring that little bell, because you know what? We put out a lot of really good content. At least that's what other people tell me. And I'd hate for you to miss any of it. So until next time, happy farming.